So, bug splats. We're talking about insects and number plates, effectively. What, what is this project actually all about? What are you hoping people can get involved with doing? Yeah, so what we're hoping is that uh, a lot of people across the country get involved in uh, this excellent citizen science project called Bugs Matter, uh, which involves um, us kindly requesting that the nation counts the number of insects on their number plates, uh, and this can hopefully tell us about how insect abundance is changing over time. And broadly speaking, uh, the, the figures <laughs> that have been gathered in previous years are pretty alarming, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're comparing our data, which has started in 2021 and has run in subsequent years, um, with a reference year that was undertaken by the RSPB in 2004. So we're looking at almost sort of a 20 year period. Um, and compared to 2023, yeah, we're seeing about 78% decline in the number of insects splattered on number plates. So it's a, it's a big figure, it's really concerning. I mean, that is a huge yeah. drop-off, isn't it? You know, 80% less, very nearly, is, is almost off the, off the charts. Yeah. So what's, a, what's that being put down to? Is it, is it just the cars? <laughs> Have we killed so many insects with the cars? Is that what's gone on? Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a wide range of drivers of insect decline, and they're, they're fairly common ones that we all know for other biodiversity as well. So the big ones are land use change, you know, the huge change in, in the types of land cover that we've got now compared to a thousand years ago or 300 years ago. Um, pollution obviously is quite a key one for insects that have their, uh, some life cycles within aquatic water bodies. Mm -hmm. So nitrates running off farmland, uh, herbicides, pesticides, they can all affect insects quite severely. Um, climate change as well, um, combined with habitat fragmentation. So with a warming climate, insects and other species need to move to no sort of north, up uh, to northern latitudes or to higher altitudes. So here in Kent, we don't have a huge range of altitudes. So we need our insects and invertebrates to be able to move north. Um, and we just have too much farmland and fragmented natural habitats for that to happen you know okay so it's not directly the cars that are the issue it's, it's it's everything else it's the general background hum of environmental damage it we're... is yeah yeah there's not been a great deal of studies on the number of uh, insects that have been killed by cars i think there was one study in the u.s that found a, a few million insects um along one one road in a year or something like that it was quite a large figure but you've got to think when you compare that to all the known drivers of insect decline and other biodiversity decline, they're going to be stronger factors. And you were just saying there that you, you, you get these geographical variations. I mean, how, uh, how many do we get in Kent? Yeah, so uh, in Kent we have um, a lot of journeys recorded, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of our members and a lot of other people in Kent here are getting involved, which is really great. So thank you to those people. Um, in terms of the actual stats of decline, we are seeing quite a steep decrease in Kent. So the number of insect splats uh, in Kent alone declined by around 88 to 89% wow. between 2004 and 2023. Um, it's one of the steepest declines of any county. That's really scary. So you're after people joining in with the, with the Bugs Matter survey. Absolutely. What do you actually have to do to do that? Is it tricky? No, it's straightforward. I can show you if you want. Okay, go yeah. on then. So pulling out of your pocket uh, you've got the bugs matter app on your phone so that's easy to find is it you just search bugs matter in your kind of play store absolutely yeah on apple and android mm -hmm. okay um, so you download the app and you open it up and it'll ask you to create an account which is really straightforward it just uh, requires um, your name and postcode and then you just accept the sort of privacy policy and that sort of thing once you've signed up you then um, tap start a journey um, and I've already got my vehicles added so you can see I can select vehicles here my, oh, yeah. my vehicle and my wife's mm -hmm. vehicle but if this was the first time I sign up it would ask me to add a vehicle um, so just like this yeah. and you pop in your registration plate number mm -hmm. and that uses a clever API to get a, a quite a lot of details about your car now this sounds a bit scary but it's actually really important so when we do the analysis we want to know how different shapes and sizes and colours and types and widths and heights of vehicles oh, really? will affect 
the rate at which bugs are splatted. So, so well, can th- the colour can make a difference? We do, well, I include it in the analysis. Uh-huh. Whether it, it doesn't usually have a, a sort of strong influence on the on the data, in, you know, within no. the data. But but, but it's so worth a car including. that's kind of aerodynamic, I guess, a lot more insects will go over the top of. And a car right. that's like you know square. Front, if you've got a Hummer, <laughs> yeah, a yeah, tank, yeah. one of those kind of things, <laughs> um, that that's going to have a different number of insects that splatter on the front of it. Just the air flow is different. Yeah, absolutely. So we've seen each year we've run the survey, HGVs uh, splat statistically significantly more bugs than other types of vehicles. Right. That and that sense. must just be because of that, that huge front front end. Yeah. And so you get the app, you start a journey, it follows your map. And yeah. then how does the app know how many insects have splattered on your car? Great. So when you've completed your journey and you've reached your destination, um, should we go down to the number plate here? Yeah. You literally you count literally how many insects are splattered on the number plate. Count the number here, and you then take a photograph um, and submit the photo and the bug count um, along with whether it's rained or not. That's quite important. Uh, we need to know if it's rained. They might have been washed off and there it's for it's not accurate data. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and as simple as that. So, uh, so it's not reliant on your counting, it's the photo that, that matters. Is it sort of like some clever AI jiggery-pokery that actually counts the insect splats on it? Then? That's a really interesting question. So it's something we've been looking into, um, and we did do a pilot study to see if we could AI count bug splats. We have parked that for the moment just due to limited resources, uh, but we would hope to go back to that. So at the moment it relies on the count of the user, um, and yeah. We, we trust that everyone can count, can count insects <laughs> accurately. So. so you yeah. have to just make sure you clean off the um, clean off your number plate before the start of the journey yes. so that you've, you've got a clean slate literally to start with. And so, I mean, there is, there is a degree of trust then to make sure that people are doing this properly. How, as a scientific experiment, you, I guess if you're asking thousands, tens of thousands of people to join in on it, there's a kind of a margin of error that you have to take into account. But in general terms, people are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, we the only possible thing is that people might not submit zero journeys, not realizing that they're important. But of course, they are. If you drive hundred miles and don't splat any bugs, that's a really important bit of data. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we we, we have uh, full faith in the in the quality of the data that's coming in. We have a lot of data, so five, six, seven thousand journeys each year. Um, covering sort of over 120,000 miles of journeys all across the UK, Scotland, Northern Ireland, right down to Cornwall and all, all over. So you, you see some geographical differences up and down the country? Yeah, so we have uh, tend to see more insect splats in the north, so in Scotland and the north of England than we do down in the south and southeast. Oh, OK, um, that's interesting. Which could be due to uh, the, the larger areas of agriculture and farmland down here, possibly. And as a sort of broad thought why does it matter you know why why should people get involved in this study yeah so i think what's really nice about bugs matter is it's really obvious how the data you're collecting is useful you know you you count the number of insects on your number blade and if you do it for a few years and throughout the survey season you might even notice yourself some different trends happening you know if you do drive lots of country lanes you might splat more bugs than if you do a motorway journey um and I think it's, it's sort of that, that sort of obvious link between the data you're collecting and how it's useful that's really quite unique with Bugs Matter. And of course, it's super easy. It's a couple of minutes before you get in your car, a couple of minutes at the end. And obviously, we, don't, we want to limit the amount of journeys we're making, um, but we all have to, a lot of us have to drive places. So you could, if you do this, it just makes it, you know, that little bit more worth making that journey, I think. So from a personal perspective, why is it important to you how many insects we have flying around? Yeah, so I'm passionate about the environment and conservation and uh, I'm kind of lucky to have been from a very young age. Um, so I used to volunteer with the RSPB and other wildlife trusts when I was sort of 14 and have carried on working in conservation now um, till my mid-30s. So it's, yeah, it's, it means a great deal to me that we have invertebrates because they underpin ecosystems mm-hmm. they underpin nature you know without them we lose a lot of ecosystem services that we need of course uh, pollination uh, decomposition and all those key things uh, that we benefit from but 
but you know, the, the, there's so many insect, uh, so many other in- animals, including insects, that feed on insects mm. and invertebrates. That they're just so key to to, to the whole ecosystem structure. Um, I would hate to think what would happen without invertebrates or with a, a very small number the of them. The whole thing would fall apart. I think it? it would. Yeah, mm. it would. It would be quite an unpleasant situation. Yeah. Um, so the Bugs Matter project, when's it running until? Can people, or is it just ongoing forever? It's ongoing forever, yeah. The longer we collect data, um, and the more data we collect each year, the more useful it is. It would be great if we could uh, partner and hear from, from companies that have you know, large fleets of vehicles, lots of drivers, that are making lots of journeys every day, um, and that would really boost the amount of data we have. Um, and yeah, of course, we want this to carry on as long as we need to then start to understand if the data can really tell us about the background rates of insect decline. If we only run it for a few years, it could be weird weather, mm. weird stochastic factors in those years affecting what we're seeing. Well, that's if a good we... word, stochastic. What does that mean? Uh, unexpected, um, unknown, um, yeah, environmental reasons perhaps, okay. the, the why the why the invertebrates. Summer 2022, for example, when mm. we got 40 degrees, is the, the number of bug splats that we counted that year a good indication of the background number of insects? Possibly not, as, as it would be in a typical year. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we can collect data over, say, five, 10 years, 15 years, even longer, we start to really have more faith that it's reflecting actual insect abundance and change. Right, so mm. download the app, Absolutely. splat some bugs, <laughs> get some good, good data. Yep, absolutely, yeah. If, if as many people can take part as possible, that's just what we want. Great stuff.